Are you starting to think about who you would want in a vice president? Like, what are you looking for? Yeah. So there's a couple different models, actually. I'm actually thinking a lot. Well, first, we nailed the federal judges, which I released this last week. That's really important. Yeah, I saw. Now I'm actually thinking more about cabinet level positions and then also who I'm going to put in positions like the Office of Personnel Management and who's going to lead the Office of Management and Budget. Those two positions, I think, are more important than cabinet level positions. They're like the plumbing of the federal government. And there I don't want policy wonks. I want bulldogs who are going to not try to mediate between me and the administrative state. I think this is where some other Republican presidents have fallen short. They end up putting people who are ambassadors for the administrative state back to them. No. These people are going to be my bulldogs. They need to be fundamentally anti-government. I think to succeed in shutting down the administrative state, the person who runs the Office of Personnel Management, the person who runs the Office of Management and Budget, they need to be in their bones fundamentally anti-government to be able to see that through unidirectionally. And I don't even want to hear what the administrative state has to say back and using them as a back channel to get back to me. That's what I think what happened to Trump, happened to Reagan, happened to many other presidents with the best of intentions. These people are going to be bulldogs. They're going to go in there, intentionally break it. They're going there to break it. So I think a lot about those positions, I have some ideas. They're not going to be people with government experience. That's a good thing. And then the cabinet level appointments, I have some good ideas of who are going to, those will be people with more government experience. Then I get to vice president. There's a couple different models of the role. One is somebody who actually could give me a sense of, I don't say spiritual grounding, but centering, right? Uh, and and there's, there's, there's a couple people who would fit that description for me. You know, who's, who's really good in this respect, you know, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't take this job, but I actually really respect my relationship with every time I hear him speak with Tucker Carlson. Mm. He's great. Deep insight. I may just happen to have seen him in Iowa a few days ago, but deep insight into what's really going on in the American psyche. And that's part of the psyche I share. And so, you know, I think that you could think of someone anyway, like that, a, a sort of a, a political priest style figure, right? You could then have somebody who's actually going to be a supplement to the office of management and budget or OPM an executor. So you're just bringing additional muscle in. I think that's an appealing way to use that position. Because you're going to need, it's going to require more people who are actual muscle doers to shut down the federal government, the executive branch of it, than people who are just pontificating about it. So I think that's the second model that I think I could use. And then the third model would be somebody who's just a domain expert in an area where I lack domain expertise Mm. the most. And I think that's another model that's worked for me. What would that be for you? So for me, it's actually foreign policy in areas outside of the areas of foreign policy I have paid close attention. I mean, I'm on the foreign policy issues that matter most to the United States, starting with China, I'm deep. Yeah. Very deep. I'm not going to be taking secondhand advice from China to how to end the war in Ukraine to rethinking our alliances with the UN or NATO, both of which I think have outlived their purposes there. I'm good. But when you think about the other areas of foreign policy, our relations with South America, parts of the Middle East, you know, these are just areas where no human being is going to have expertise in everything. But we might bring somebody who has a similar worldview but is able to channel that to other parts of the world. So those would be the three different models for vice president. But I want to staff out what the rest of the apparatus looks like because then it will show which of those three is really the rate limiter that I need. And, and I think any one of those three is – a viable choice yeah. for the type of person that I'd put in a VP role. 